everybody, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Richard. I am a Los Angeles based filmmaker, photographer, content creator, colorist. I wear many hats, but on today's episode of the vlog, we are talking about color grading S-Log3 footage from the Sony a7 IV. And I want to quickly share my process on color grading the Sony a7 IV so that you can take some of these ideas and deploy it into your own workflow. Yes, this is just my workflow but I think there might be a thing or two that you can steal in terms of just trying to make stunning images that really have that cinematic look that we are all striving for at the end of the day. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve. I have a ton of footage that I shot during my trip to Europe and I wanna get started color grading. But before we jump in too far, I need to go into some of the details in terms of how I set up my project. For this project in particular, I'm using Resolve Color Management. Resolve Color Management allows us to get a normalized image into a Rec. 709 space very quickly. It does all the work under the hood so that we don't have to go into too much detail in terms of trying to figure out how to get our colors into a appropriate or the most true state that can be showed on monitors. To start, I changed it from DaVinci YRGB to DaVinci YRGB Color Managed. From there, I changed it to Custom, which gives me more options. Input Color Space, S Gamut 3 Cine, DaVinci Y R or DaVinci Y Gamut Intermediate is my timeline color space, which is going to give me the largest possible space that I can work in. It's going to provide a lot more roll off in terms of colors and it's just going to make um, better pleasing images when we start working on the image. And then from there, uh, Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 is my output setting. Um, it really depends on what you want. I mean, I can do 2.2 for an RGB monitor, but in this case, I'm going to stick with Gamma 2.4. So from that, we can simply get into grading. <laughs> So when I go about color grading, my workflow is very systematic. It always starts with setting the exposure. From there, I start looking at the contrast and trying to get that contrast ratio and balance correct. And then finally, balancing an image. That's basically my primaries in a nutshell in terms of trying to get it into a place that is a decent looking image. And yes, I can do a lot more in terms of secondaries. I can do a lot more in terms of playing with the image and trying to push it in different ways. Um, but in my opinion, I think the first thing that we need to do is really set the image up to be manipulated further down um, in the process. So that's what we're going to do to get started. So the first thing that I always do when working on color grading an image is starting to work with exposure. In this case, I would normally start thinking about my offset in terms of like what is the broadest adjustment that I need to make that I can start moving my footage into a decent spot. In this case, it's looking pretty good, especially when we look down here at our RGB parade, it's pretty well shot. So I don't think I'm going to need to touch the offset. So in this case, I'm going to start with a gamma and start seeing what I can do to start moving the colors around a little bit. I think I'm bringing it down a little bit. And then I'm also going to do the same with the shadows and maybe I'll start bringing it back up. And one thing I do like about the ripple is it gives me the ability to work on two parameters at once without having to touch my mouse. Now the highlights need to come up. So that's basically the exposure, just trying to get it into a good spot. And I'm pretty happy with the direction that's going. You can see that it made a pretty sizable move. From there, we're gonna start working on our contrast and we're gonna start pushing that. And this is one of those moments where I wish I had the Blackmagic micro panel and even the mini because I'd be able to do this without um, my mouse. So playing with the contrast, I'll do it one more time. So I'll bring it up a little bit. And then the other thing I wanna do is play with the pivot. I wanna see like where I can move it and still try and retain some of the blacks. You don't wanna lose those too much. And you can see it really helps start to shape the image and give it um, tone and detail. And then from there, I'm going to start playing with balance. Sony footage tends to have a bit of a green tint to it. So I'm just going to use my printer lights, um, which is basically the offset wheel to try and fix it. So in this case, I'm going to 
take it down by one point of green. I don't think it can come down that far because you can see it gets pretty magenta in its, in its face. So I think by bringing it down by a half point kind of starts moving it in the right direction. Yeah, so that's basically all I would do to really shape an image of that nature. And then it's, it's getting there. I mean, I feel like it is missing something. I think it's a little too blue at the current state. So I think I would bring up the yellows a little bit, again with the printer lights, by just hitting six, which brings down the blue channel. And that is starting to get there, but I think there's a lot more that we can do to really make this image pop. Right now, it's just my brother against this yellow building, and it's, I'm trying to find ideas that I can use to like just make it separate a little bit more. Um, with that in mind, there's two things that I think I'm gonna do. Um, the first is I'm gonna create a parallel node and I'm gonna get a clean feed here. All I wanna do with this is I want to use a depth map. And this is a new feature in DaVinci 18 that's amazing. It's been really fun to play with and it's been really cool to just see how it impacts um, the color that we can manipulate and it it's unfortunately processor intensive but in many ways i think it is incredible so what we can do is just start pulling it down a little bit and we can play with the near limit a little bit yeah something like that and then if we invert that and make it better so it gets a nice clean key and I turn off my preview, I now have the ability to pull down the yellows a bit. If I want to create a little bit more um, separation between the bright yellows in the background and my brother in the foreground, I can now do that. And what I will do to move it in the right direction is pull down the offset because I want it to be a global adjustment. I don't want it to be a something that's just gonna impact um, the highlights. I want it to impact every part of the image and that is being impacted by the key there. And you can see that something like that really helps start moving in the right direction. So there you have it. That's how I do my primary grades when working with DaVinci Resolve. It's nothing very complicated. It's straight to the point, really straightforward. Exposure, contrast, balance. There's a lot more that we can do with this program. This is only the tip of the iceberg. So if you're looking for more DaVinci Resolve tutorials, be sure to hit subscribe, hit like, leave a comment of something that you're trying to learn and resolve. I want to learn it too. Um, let's be a community, let's learn resolve and filmmaking tools together. But that's all we got for this episode of the vlog. But as always, create, share, and sustain the life that you want. Get out there and make some awesome work. Thanks guys.